Hello, my fellow Ruby Charm Colors fans. I have had a great Amazon package day today. And one of the things that I received was my 2020 copy of Creative Companion. I had to wait. I didn't order it as soon as it came out because I was going to be out of town. And I didn't want it to get here and um, me still be away. So it arrived just a... Uh, a few minutes ago, I'm super excited to show you what is the same and what is different about it from last year's Creative Companion. Um, real quickly, you've seen in most of my videos, at least even in the background, my 2019 Creative Companion. You see that I have it well loved, that it has my pencil charts, that I have recorded um, color schemes and used it to keep track of events in my life. Um, have not used it as much as I wanted to sometimes, but also on my really active coloring months, I can go back and look at all the colors that I put together that year. One of the things I didn't do with my Creative Companion was record anything except coloring, um, except in a couple of cases. And this year, I actually plan on using the 2020 for more things. Like one of my other big hobbies is crocheting. And last year, I crocheted so much and I have no record of how many blankets I made and what colors they were and for whom. So this year, I'm actually also going to use my journal for keeping track of some of my other hobbies and other activities. Um, one reason for that is instead of the calendars being spread throughout the book, they're actually all in the front right here early on. Um, I think that makes it a little bit easier for me. So uh, that's one of the things is having front calendars instead of calendars throughout the book. So as usual, let's see, there's gorgeous artwork. Um, oh, really quick, I forgot to mention, one of the other things is the thickness. This book from last year is actually has a lot less pages than the new 2020. The new 2020 has well over 300 pages. So there's a lot more room for your creativity as well as the rest of your life. So you can use this to record um, a, a bigger facet of your hobbies or if you're a mom with a busy schedule if you are a career woman with a busy schedule you can actually use this a as a bullet journal for other things not just your coloring or you can combine it and like I plan on doing and putting more than just my coloring hobby I also plan to keep track of my crochet um, Maybe I'll get some cross-stitching done this year. Who knows? 2020's got a lot of room for everything. Um, you're going to love that Susan's art is throughout this book. Surprises here, as in that you're getting to color on black. And I already showed you calendar section. It also has little bits of art. So fun. If you're a doodler, that's going to be awesome. Um, art supplies resources. I don't know about you, but whenever I go to the store, I always forget what I need. So here's some pages dedicated to writing down what you're going to want to buy when you run to, I don't know, Hobby Lobby, Dick Blick, Michaels, Joann's, wherever you get your supplies. Here is a great place for your wish list goals. If you're like me, you're on a budget. And, uh, Maybe you want to be able to make well-placed hints for the times when uh, you're on people's gift lists. You can keep track of techniques that you've learned on Instagram and YouTube from other artists. You can keep a library listing of your color books. Um, that's awesome. You can keep track of websites. How many times do our phones crash or whatever reason our browser is and we lose our history isn't a paper copy awesome to have so uh, there's hashtag 
and oh, yeah, I didn't want to miss that podcast. I'm really into podcasts. I don't know if you listen to Passionista's coloring co podcasts, but it's so great to hear what other colorists who are really admired by most of us are doing and how they got where they are in the coloring community. So um, I like to keep track of things like that. And here's the beginning of your planner. She has a combination of grid pages, lined pages, blank pages, um, pages where you can keep track of color schemes, and then pages with her line art for coloring, doodling, journaling. I know last year um, I wrote down all the pages and colors that I used on different pages in my creative journal. And um, whenever I would get interrupted, which is a lot in my life, I uh, leave everything out, but I still might forget what I was doing, where I was at, and going back and picking a page back up, having a coloring journal, and having those pencil colors written down, and uh, even samples of my blending and stuff in my journal right beside whatever I'm working on. I can sit down and get right back into a page, and it saves me a lot of time. It relieves a little bit of stress, because this is supposed to be a stress-free hobby, <laughs> so... A little organization can go a long way if you're pulled in a lot of directions. I know I am, so I assume most of us are. And even if the direction that we're being pulled is health problems. I know many of us color because we are limited to how much we can get out, um, exposure to other people, our activity level is lower than most people but we still you know can feel pulled in different directions so um, being able to keep track of what I'm coloring as I'm coloring it when I have to leave my page and come back it's it's just changed the way I color and it's really helped me you can see her beautiful color charts a lot of work goes into these color charts so that you can keep track of your pencils um, super helpful. She has several named brands, as you can see, and also places to record. Maybe you come up with some pencils that you combine that just you love that combination together, and now you won't forget. And you can write it down, color them down, blend them right there, write notes, keep track of all of that, especially if you're in a no, no brand section for pencils that maybe don't already have everything listed. You can still use your pencils. But also, um, if you're crossing brands, I know for me, I'll use different brands on the same page and that comes up with unique blending combinations. So having it written down that I used Faber-Castell with my Prisma pencils and which numbers together and how they blended, I can keep track of all of that. Um, I just tend to like like to do that. Organized chaos, right? <laughs> so we're almost through. I think somehow I've managed to talk through and flip through for you. I hope this was entertaining. I hope it makes you excited. I hope that this book is on your wish list, if not already in your shopping cart. Um, I really love Susan's artwork and the fact that it's in a bullet journal is just one of my favorite things. And let me just plug really quick her Ocean Imaginary. I am currently working on actually the cover art in my own style. I'm using Prisma and Inktense and here in her actual coloring books I'm able to write down Prisma. Inktense, Prisma, and so um, that's an example of how you can use the creative journal separately or the one that's built in to her art books. Um, but I used my bullet journal 
for when I'm working on her art in PDF form, but also when I'm coloring in other artists' books. I have several people that I love, Maria Troll, Hannah Carlson, Joanna Basford, um, the Moon Blossom book by Katrina. Um, just, you know, I'm a big fan of coloring for a long time now, and I have quite the collection. And uh, the Creative Companion to me is a must-have tool every year now. I hope that Susan's able to give us a new one. So put this in your Amazon shopping cart right now. You won't regret it. Um, you're going to love having it with your tools and as a coloring book as well because it has enough art in it to keep you busy. All right, my friends. Have a great day.